Well, we got to talk about what's going on with these fires, and uh, it's very, very scary, obviously, and, you know, uh, uh, it's freaking me out quite a great deal, actually. Uh, so uh, what you're looking at here is the building on the corner of 2nd and Main, which managed to catch fire twice, not once, but twice. Uh, this is the aftermath of the second fire uh, that occurred, because, yes, that's right, uh, on, uh, was it Saturday night, uh, it caught fire again. Uh, uh, absolutely crazy, uh, but it did. It caught it caught fire right around the same time as it did. It, it rekindled basically. It 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 re it reignited. Uh, it was so dry and windy out uh, that it reignited and started on fire again. This is the aftermath uh, of that second fire again. That building is completely gutted. It's going to have to probably be torn down. You can see uh, the damage there uh, and. Uh, you know, any hope that anyone had of salvaging anything was pretty much gone when the second fire started. Uh, and you can see this is the leftover uh, leftovers uh, of what happened. Uh, and they took these pictures back on the sixth deck. It was last night uh, they took these pictures. Uh, but uh, we have other pictures to look at here. Uh, this is what it looked like on Saturday night. Uh, and you could see the flames. It was actually even more than, than Friday night. There were more flames just reaching up into the sky there. Uh, and uh, it all just very incredible. Uh, Newsday had an article on it uh, that uh, the Nassau County told the crews received the call around 6 p.m. Saturday that a second fire was blazing at the mixed-use building on 2nd Street. Uh, fire crews knocked out a fire in the same building Friday evening. The fire had some good way, Hickman said. It was intense. But not as bad as Friday night. Because no, they're claiming it's not as bad. It wasn't as bad as Friday night. But those flames look pretty bad to me. It was unclear if the original fire reignited to cause the Saturday blaze. Investigators are looking into the possibility the building's roof collapsed due to the flames. So uh, 120 fire. It says further below. 125 fires from 13 fire departments battled the blaze. And it was frigid, man. I'll tell you. Uh, you know, um, it's not an easy job. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, my appreciation and thanks goes out to these firemen who are volunteers uh, and they're out there in that weather uh, trying to put out the fire. And it's very difficult with the wind and the dry air uh, that um, that um, uh, that uh, to put this out, you know. So let's uh, we have a few more articles on this. Let's. Go here, obviously, I had to screenshot that because Newsday, you know the way they are. Uh, so we have another article about this uh, fire here. Departments respond to building fire. This is from the Mineola American newspaper, a uh, local uh, paper at MineolaAmerican.com. I'll put the links below. Uh, the public information office reported the details of a building fire that occurred on Friday, January 14th at 6 p.m. So this is about the first one that occurred at this, at this location. So according to police... Third precinct officers responded to a call for a building fire located at 178 2nd Street. All occupants evacuated the building and no injuries were reported. The Mineola Fire Department responded to extinguish the flames and had assistance from 15 surrounding fire departments. Businesses Metro PCS and the discount store were lost in the fire. The Red Cross also responded to assist with displaced residents. Arson and bomb squad detectives and fire marshals were also at the scene and the investigation is ongoing. And it says that area is not, no stranger to devastation from fires. Back in 2020, this was last year, a five-alarm fire occurred between 1st and 2nd Streets. At the time, the Mineola Fire Department was assisted by 12 other fire departments, uh, which consisted of approximately 200 firefighters due to the severe damage of the buildings. They had to be demolished. And uh, this one is probably going to have to be demolished as well. Um, and again, Channel 12, they never sent a reporter down to cover this. Uh, they didn't really cover any news today. Uh, just political news, just gearing to a certain demographic again. Uh, you know, it's the same old story here. Um, uh, there's nothing from, uh, they were all over the South Shore yesterday. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is what they had. This is the story. We already, I already showed it to you. They only gave it 24 seconds and read it over, you know. They're looking out. Uh, they're looking out from their enclaves at us, and just like wondering, boy, boy, the middle of the island is really going downhill fast. There's some video of again. Uh, this is the uh, this fire again. So it's just uh, what is going on. I mean, this is not supposed to happen. Obviously, the weather might have played a role in it, but um, 
all these fires going on. It's very disturbing. And, and there was another fire that there's no press on, and that is a garage fire. Uh, this was in the village of Hempstead uh, right here. Uh, the DPW uh, garage in Hempstead uh, caught fire, and that is a picture. This happened today. Uh, it looks like this is the village of Hempstead, not the town of Hempstead. Uh, this is the village of Hempstead. So when you think of Hempstead, that's where it was. So this is on Milburn Avenue in Hempstead. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to uh, go to that. Let's go to Milburn Avenue in Hempstead and uh, show you where that is. I know where Milburn Avenue is, too. Um, I think I know where Milburn Avenue is. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Yeah, this is Milburn Avenue right here. Uh, so Village of Hempstead. DPW facility. I think, yeah, this is it right here. Uh, so Milburn Avenue, this is where, this is where the fire ha happened right here. So it looks pretty bad. It looks like uh, this whole... Yeah, that's it right there. It looks like the whole building. Or, I mean, it's a big... It was a big fire. Um, yeah, again, nothing in the news about it. Channel 12 didn't cover it at all. Uh, the only things I, I could find about it were on social media. But there you go. How could that not make the news? I don't understand it. I, we're just forgotten in the middle of the island. That's what it is. We're just forgotten. Uh, and these fires, it's just, it's now reaching a new level. You know, when this, when you had areas in Brooklyn and the Bronx going down home in the 70s and the 80s, you had fires. And now we're seeing the same thing happen in the middle of the island, which is really a sign uh, with what's going on. So let's talk about uh, the latest crimes going on here because we have more problems in the middle of the island with crime. Uh, let's see. Uh, this was, okay, this was an arrest, okay, this was, this is uh, a murder that two teenagers were charged with here. So, uh, two teenagers, I don't think I saw this on Channel 12, two teenagers have been charged with murder and other charges after a man was found dead on a Long Island roadway. Officers responded to a 911 call for a man lying in the street in Uniondale at Alexander Avenue and Lee Road at 8.50 p.m. Wednesday, November 10th upon police arrival. The man was pronounced dead by a Nassau County police medic. On November 12th, police announced the victim had been identified as Kyle Middling, age 24, of Hempstead. On Sunday, January 16th, Nassau County police announced the arrests of the two suspects. Kyle Cole Thurst of Uniondale and Tariq Pitwad of West Babylon, both age 18, were charged with second-degree murder, first-degree attempted robbery, secondary criminal possession of weapon, and they will be arraigned on Sunday at First District Court in Hempstead. Yeah, I know. It's 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 unbelievable, the crime uh, that's going on here. Um, I think I read that one already. I think I read that one. This Flora Park thing. I think I read it, right? Or is this another one? Um, uh, I don't know. I think I read this one already. This is the incident that happened in Floral Park with the guy that had a gun. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, another middle of the island uh, thing here. Um, let's see. Suspect named after uh um a man was found shot and killed at Suffolk home on Christmas. This arrest was made today. Channel 12 has nothing on it. A suspect has been apprehended following an investigation after a man was found shot dead inside his Long Island home. Southampton Town Police Department officers responded on Christmas Day to the call of a burglary on Roses Grove Road in Southampton at 8.45 a.m. Uh, Saturday, December 25th. Upon arrival, uh, officers found the man inside the home who was shot. The victim identified as Stephen Burns, age 53, a resident of the home, was pronounced dead by the Office of the Suffolk County Medical Examiner on Monday, January 17th. Suffolk County Police announced the arrest of a Hampton Bays resident, Dominic Parisi, age 57, in connection with the case. Uh, this is the thing that happened, I believe, in that North Sea area. Uh, he's been charged with second-degree murder. He was arraigned. He was held overnight at the South Southampton Town Police Headquarters in Hampton Bays on arraigned at Southampton Jail. Town Justice Course on Court on Monday. They said the shooting was not a random attack, so the person was targeted. We don't know why. May have been due to drugs. We don't know. We just don't know. We can only guess at this point. Um, now let's go to uh, this man wanted from stealing two thousand two hundred worth. So this guy has been breaking to Suffolk County businesses. Uh, 
uh, a man allegedly stole tools from a vehicle parked at Quag Plaza Trail. Uh, that's out in Quag, 8 p.m. December 20th, 2021. He broke a window to that. Uh, and uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, we got more crime here. I got, oh boy, we got more. All right. <sighs> Robbery in Westbury. Third Squad report investigating a robbery that occurred on Thursday, January 13th, 2022 at 6.50 p.m. in Westbury. According to detectives, two male subjects entered the Wheatley Hills Discount Liquors located at 193 Post Avenue. I know where that is. That's right in the middle of downtown Westbury. The subjects selected multiple bottles of liquor and wine and placed them inside of their clothing. A store employee approached the subjects and confronted them. One of the subjects took a bottle of wine from his jacket and struck the employee causing a laceration to the victim's head. Both suspects fled on foot in an unknown direction. The first sus- sus- subject is being described as a male black, approximately six foot two, 50 years of age. He's wearing a black jacket, green camo baseball hat, and rainbow-colored face mask. The second subject, also a male black, five foot seven inches tall, wearing a black jacket, green pants, and face mask, with a skull printed on it. So, yep. Yeah. No crime. Willis Park. Major Case Bureau reports the arrest of these guys right here. Three men from Pennsylvania. There, uh, um, they report the arrest of three men from Pennsylvania that occurred on Thursday, January thirteenth, at three fifty-five a.m. in Willis Park. According to burglaries pattern, squad detectives, third precinct officers were on routine patrol when they located a black BMW four-door sedan that fit the description of a vehicle used in the larceny of a catalytic converter for earlier in the day in New Hyde Park. Officers initiated a traffic and law uh, vehicle initiated a vehicle and traffic law stop. All three occupants were removed from the vehicle, and defendants Andy De, De, De Jesus Rosario, 22 of 105 North Broad Street, Hazelton. Alexander Morales, 26, of 31 East Broad Street, Hazleton, and Andy Conception Incarnation, age 22, of 105 North White Street, and Shenandoah were all placed into custody without incident. All three defendants have been charged with auto stripping, second degree, criminal mischief, third degree, possession of burglar tools, and attempted petite larceny. All will be arraigned on Friday, January 14th at First District Court. So we don't know if they were going to be let out or not, but uh, there you go. It's uh, There's been a lot of that going on. Uh, even News 12 actually did wind up doing a story on uh, on that uh, last week. I have to go way back here. Let's see if you can find it here. Well, maybe it's in crime. Uh, even they did a story on it. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, Catalytic Third. This is the one right here. They actually did a story on this. Uh, and they're talking about Plainview. Uh, they've been hitting Plainview, all the middle of the island towns, New White Park, Hicksville, and Selden, of course. <laughs> you know, it just fits the pattern as to what's going on here. Got another crime to talk about here. <laughs> I almost missed this one, so I had to edit the video. Stolen car, subject nabbed after woman flees from scene outside Long Island Starbucks. A suspect was apprehended after police say he entered a car in which a woman was inside and then stole it when she, fl- when she fled to a nearby Long Island Starbucks to call 911. A 60-year-old woman was sitting in a 2022 Audi sedan in the parking lot of Starbucks, lo- Starbucks located at, in Great Neck at 55 Northern Boulevard when a male subject opened her rear door and sat down just before 5.30 a.m. Sunday, January 16th, not knowing the subject. And in fear, the woman exited her vehicle and ran inside Starbucks to call 911. The man climbed into the driver's seat and fled eastbound on Northern Boulevard. Responding, officers located the subject sitting in the Audi on Clare Street. Officers gave verbal commands to exit the vehicle that were ignored by the subject. Officers were forced to physically remove the subject who actively resisted, and after a brief struggle, the man... Ray June White was taken into custody. While in custody at the Sixth Squad, White kicked a detective's computer and knocked over a table in an attempt to break the detective's phone. White has been charged with second-degree grand larceny, second-degree criminal mischief, second-degree criminal possession of stolen property, third-degree unauthorized use of a vehicle, and resisting arrest, and he is due to be arraigned. Uh, he was already arraigned today, Monday, January 17th, at First District Court in Hempstead. And was he let out of jail? Maybe he was let out of jail. We don't know. We, they definitely, he definitely could, be, uh, could have been 
let out of jail, of course. Not that Governor Hochul cares about any of this, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's all part of the plan, guys. Sick all these damn criminals on us, and only certain. None of these stories I read to you, not one of them has happened in the enclave. Babylon, Massapequa, Rockville Center, Lindbrook. Uh, you know, no, not none of them. Belmore, no, Wontaw. They're all sitting pretty. They're all sitting pretty while we're going through hell. Uh, all right, we have another arrest here in Island Park. So some of it's on the south shore. Here's one in Island Park. Uh, Wheatley Heights man was arrested for an incident that occurred on Wednesday, January 12th at Island Park. And this is 11.23 a.m. According to detectives, fourth precinct officer responded to a call for a male operating a gray Honda CRV erratically southbound in Long Beach Road. The vehicle was speeding. It had no tires on the driver's side. Officers located the vehicle unoccupied of course wheatley heights is in the middle of the island so he's from the middle of the island unoccupied in the parking lot of outback state house located at 3939 long beach road witnesses approached the officers and gave them a description of the driver responding officers located the subject exiting the ace hardware at 3965 long beach road the ensuing investigation determined that the honda crv had been stolen earlier that day from hempstead the defendant claudie fieri i can't even pronounce it claudie Fieri, uh, 25 of 52 Sunset Avenue, was placed into custody without further incident. The defendant, Claudia Fieri, is charged with criminal possession of stolen property. Third degree will be arraigned on Thursday, January 13, 2022, at First District Court in Hempstead. So, yeah, it's just some of what's going on. Uh, but there's more because we've got to talk about happening in the city. Uh, as we know, uh, or as you may not know, uh, uh, we don't want a subway map, but we want to know this, uh, the news here. The woman that was uh, killed, uh, by a homeless man. Oh, please. And I mean, let me read it. Lovely. I love it. Really. You know, it's, it's... So, so remembering the woman fatally. So here's the irony of it. The woman who was pushed in front of a subway train and train inside Tom, Times Square station was an advocate for the homeless. So this was the incident that happened. They say an unsuspecting sub. So uh, this homeless guy kill uh, pushed the woman in front of a train in Times Square and have a 930 a.m. Times Square, 42nd Street station, like one of the busiest stations in the in the system. Police say Michelle. Elisa Go, age 40, of Upper West Side, was pushed into the tracks as a southbound R train approached the station. She was pronounced dead at the scene. The suspect, Simon Marshall, 61, fled the scene but turned himself in. He has been arrested and charged with murder. They say The police say he's homeless, and the suspect is known to police in his prior arrest in 2017 and 1998 for the attempted robberies of cab drivers. Uh, and... This crime is out of control in the city and the subways. Uh, and, uh, you know, what a tra terrible tragedy. This innocent woman was killed. Uh, you really have to look out for your surroundings because these, these are monsters that are on the prowl in the subway. Uh, and you've got to be, be, have your head on a swivel constantly. If you, you can't be looking at your phone. You can't be distracted because they are, if, they, if you're distracted, they're going to try to kill you. Uh, and this guy is psychotic. And why the f why the hell is he out on the streets? Uh, and there it's Erica Adams. Glad he's involved in this, but the problem was he's been talking about the shootings. Like, like we got to get the guns off the streets. The guns they don't need guns to kill people. This is a perfect example of that. We don't have to get the guns off the streets. We've got to get these criminals off the streets. And, you know, they, they should not, you know, they are homeless all over the place. Let me show you what I had to deal with the other day. Take a look at this. This is Jamaica. All right. This is the Port Authority. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the air train. All right. This is yesterday. All right. Uh, I had to ch change trains there. And, yeah, Jamaica is a pretty scary place. All right, but usually they're very good about keeping the homeless out of the air train, but not anymore. Not anymore. And like I said, Jamaica, I feel bad for anyone stuck living there. Um, 
you know, it's 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 really rough over there. It really is. And, you know, I don't know how anyone can deal with living there, but it says right here, laying down. What the hell happened there? There we go. It's my computer just being stupid. Right now it wants to be stupid. Let me get it over here. Here's the sign. It says, laying down or sitting on the floor in the building at any time. That is including sitting on your bears or other objects you own to sit on. So no sit laying is sitting down, but look at what they're doing right next to the sign. And that's just a perfect example of what's going on in New York City right now. Even with the new mayor now, we are now almost half a month into Eric Adams' term, and I haven't seen the problem getting better at all. In fact, it just continues to get worse. Um, because as long as they're allowed to hang out here and you give them the option, no, they should not have an option. The police need to call it and tell them, look, you either get help, you have to leave, or you can go to jail. Get help or go to jail. Those are your two options. All right? Until the police start being tough on these options. Right? And people say, oh, get social workers. Get social workers. Um, but as long as they can refuse, they're going to they're continue to be. They know there's no consequences. And, and the city is continuing to go downhill. The governor doesn't care. The mayor acts like he cares. But here we are, a half month into Eric Adams' term, and things haven't gotten better at all in the city. So, again, it's all part of the plan. We leave you with talking about the plan again because, you know, having less desirable places to live in New York and having only a few safe enclaves left drives up the prices of those left safe places to live That so that regular... People and, 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 you know, all of us can't afford to live there. It's only a certain demographic that's going to be allowed to live the good life. The rest of us are going to have to face our quality of life continuing to decline or having to go and live somewhere else. Or you can fight like hell to get into an enclave. That's a real uphill battle, as you know. So I got to say, I'm not impressed Eric Adams so far. I'm very disappointed that the crime, I know it's only been half a month, but uh, to blame the guns. A classic example here. This guy put, killed a woman, murdered her, and he didn't need a gun. He just pushed her onto the tracks because it's a violent sociopath that shouldn't have been on the streets to begin with. When the police are in the system, great. But these, these homeless bums, they're still there. They're not getting rid of them. You can, have, you can have the police there. There were police in the station when this happened. And a woman still died. Because these guys know they can continue to hang out and the police aren't going to do nothing. So, very sad. And now this woman is, 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 is dead. This innocent woman is dead because of it. This girl right here, very cute, sweet girl. Murdered! By some crazy lunatic that shouldn't have been on the streets to begin with. Get these guys out of the subway, Mayor. Mayor Adams, stop focusing on the guns. You've got to get these criminals off the streets. That's it.